Okay, for objective four, we actually have a really fun um, lab experiment that we'll do with you in class, but I'll go ahead and just kind of intro and give you a, um, a quick look into what we'll see in class. So the first thing is you'll definitely want to know these terms right here. When we talk about tension, um, we're talking about a measurable force. And tension is what we will see on these graphs that you'll um, draw and that we'll label in class. Um, and so when we're, when we're drawing these shapes on the graph, that is a measure of the tension or the force or strength of the contraction. When we see muscle tone, remember that if our muscles are not constantly contracting or parts of the muscles are constantly contracting, we would be completely flaccid. So if you're just sitting in your chair listening to this video right now, you have muscles that are constantly producing tension to help you hold your posture. So that's what muscle tone refers to. The motor unit, um, the motor unit is a term that you'll hear a lot about in lecture. We will have these things called motor neurons and we'll talk about those in more detail in our class when we get to the nervous system, but it's essentially a neuron that serves the purpose of producing movement in the body. And that neuron is going to branch out and it will connect to muscle cells. Remember that a muscle is made up of many muscle cells or muscle, muscle fibers. Um, they're arranged in those fascicles that we looked at the beginning of this chapter. So a motor unit is simply that one motor neuron, but then all of the little muscle cells that it branches out to and touches. And then when we see this term here, recruitment, really what we're talking about is um, essentially when we need to develop more tension or we need to produce a stronger force. Um, for instance, when we're lifting up something heavy, um, in order to do that, in order to get more of your muscle to, to respond to that, we have to increase the number of motor units that are actually contracting. And there are a couple of different ways that that happens. We'll look at those in more detail um, below with these graphs. So here, what I want to point out is that these terms right here are things that you are going to label on this graph. So let me go ahead and give you the image of the graph. And I want you to go ahead and copy that graph as you see it um, here in this space. All right, so it will be really helpful if you already have this drawn out when you come to class. That way you don't have to do this in class. Um, the important thing is that you draw um, just the basic shapes here. It doesn't matter that you match the exact number of squares, um, but we want you to make sure you have the tension lines right here. Here that you have stimulations, you can draw a little star, something like that, and that you also have your units on the x-axis, which will be uh, voltage. So here at two volts, you can see no tension was produced at three volts. You have a little bit of tension at four, a bit more tension. And that five, six, and seven volts, those are the highest peaks you have. And you'll notice that they are all the same um, height, or they produce the same amount of tension. So go ahead and get that drawn on the first, um, the first uh, chart you have there. All right, now that you have the graph drawn, let's just quickly visit the text um, to explain the different labels that you'll put on that graph. So here is our experimental design. We have a muscle that is hooked up to um, some electrodes, and we can either control the voltage that gets sent to the muscle, or the frequency, or essentially how many times we send a zap to the muscle. And then the um, amount of tension produced by that muscle gets recorded on the graph like you see here. And so let's kind of go down here. And this graph right here will kind of match the first one that we look at. So um, 
I just want to say the, these numbers here, for the sake of just learning this, the numbers are arbitrary, meaning I don't want you to ever just memorize numbers. Let's memorize concepts and trends. That way, no matter what numbers we see here, we can still come to the same conclusion. So let's go um, back to this part of the graph right here. What we're saying is that at one millivolt, so you know your um, hand-drawn chart in the lab in the lab manuals is in volts. But again, that doesn't matter. Let's think of the concept here. When we sent a zap of one millivolt to the muscle, so we turn the voltage to one millivolt zap. What happened down here? Nothing happened, right? So going back to your chart, what was the first number you had? On our chart, the first number is two volts. Was any tension produced? No. And so we would call that a sub-threshold stimulus, meaning even though we sent volt to that muscle, we did not produce a strong enough um, or really, we didn't produce any tension here, um, but in addition to that, we did not evoke a visible response. So on this specific example, two volts would be a sub-threshold stimulus. Let's look back at the other graph, and I want you to tell me what the sub-threshold stimulus is on that example. All right, when we look at this example, which voltage down here would represent sub-threshold? And hopefully you're saying, yeah, one millivolt, even two millivolts, and then somewhere in between two and three, we finally develop some tension. So let's go back to our lab manual example and talk about those other Here on our lab manual chart, we see that we turned up the voltage to three volts. Now we zap the muscle. That's what this little part here means. And when we zap the muscle, what happened? Oh, look, we developed tension. It means that that muscle actually contracted in response to this amount of voltage. So on this specific example, we would say that three volts represents threshold stimulus, meaning three volts is the lowest amount of voltage um, required to uh, stimulate a muscle contraction. As we continue to look at this chart here, what's happening as we increase the voltage? We can see that the tension rises, right? And that kind of makes sense. Why is the tension rising? It's because, remember, we have, a, we have many motor units that will attach to a muscle. Some muscles have very few motor units. Other muscles have large amounts or many motor units. If we stimulate more motor units, we will create more tension. Another way you might think of that logically is that you have more muscle fibers contracting and therefore generating more tension. So the next term I want you to understand on this chart is that the reason why this tension gets bigger and bigger is because we are recruiting more motor units. And we call this rise in tension due to the increased um, voltage um, motor unit summation. Summation, remember the mathematical operation of uh, that, that it reminds us of is adding. So it's like we're adding motor units to one another. And when we do that, we create more tension. So the rise in the tension graph here is due to motor unit summation. Let's now look at these peaks right here. There's something kind of curious going on here. And we have one more term, and that term is maximal stimulus. So um, we notice that volts 5, 6, and 7 have the largest peaks, but they're also the, the same height. So how do we make sense of that? Um, if you were to guess what maximal stimulus is, 
which one of these numbers would you say that is? Okay, hopefully you said five volts. And if you're going, ah, oh, man, I said seven volts. Hey, that is okay. Many students say seven volts. And I get why you might have said that. So let's talk about why the answer is five volts. Remember, maximal stimulus is going to be the greatest voltage that results in an increase in strength of co contraction. It's the greatest voltage. Okay, so for this particular example, at five volts, this muscle is maxed out. So why do we even bother checking other volts? It's because we wanna make sure. So at six volts, it's the same as five. Well, let's just really be sure. We crank it up to seven volts, it is the same. So yeah, we can say experimentally, um, five volts is it, meaning all of the muscle units or excuse me, the motor units have been stimulated. So we could crank this up to 1 million volts. What do you think the height of that peak, that tension peak will be? You're seeing it, okay? Um, it doesn't matter how high we increase the volts. If we have stimulated all of the motor units, that is the maximum amount. So really, why did this end at seven? because I ran out of paper, okay? If I were to have this paper go on and on and on for another mile, those peaks would look the exact same as this. So again, just to summarize, when we zap a muscle and we, nothing happens, that's subthreshold. Wherever we have the first tension formed causing a um, muscle contraction, that voltage will be Threshold, again, doesn't matter what the numbers are. On this specific example, it's three volts. Um, but I don't want you to memorize numbers. I want you to memorize trends. The reason why this gets bigger is because we have motor unit summation or the recruitment of more motor units. And then the first highest peak, again, the first highest peak you see, that is going to be the maximal stimulus, meaning all motor units have been recruited it doesn't matter how many more volts we give it, that is the strongest that muscle will contract.